What motivates you? Whether you're a senior executive or an individual contributor, at least one factor motivates you in the workplace. What motivates you may be an easy question to answer, but do you know what motivates your direct reports and your colleagues? I'm Dr. Katie Theory, Department Chair and Professor for the Forbes School of Business and Technology. I'm passionate about preparing the workforce of tomorrow and equipping leaders of today. In his book, The Heart of Coaching, Thomas Crane cites a research study by Glenn Tobe and Associates. They asked managers to rank the importance of 10 motivators for their employees. They then asked the employees to rank the same list in order of what they wanted most from their jobs. As it turns out, what managers thought employees wanted most and what they really wanted were not in sync. Managers assumed pay was the top motivator. Employees ranked pay as important, but not as important as appreciation. What assumptions do you make about the value and impact of appreciation and recognition in the workplace? Countless studies have been conducted and many articles and books have been written on the subject of employee appreciation and motivation. If you've looked at any one of them, what you'll notice is some disagreement on the weight of factors that influence workplace motivation. Still, there's value in reviewing the list and determining which factors contribute to at least a portion of what motivates the people you work with every day. What is largely agreed upon is that people want to hear when they're doing something right and that what they do makes a difference. Have you heard of the Hawthorne effect? It's a term in psychology that developed out of a study in the Hawthorne plant of the Western Electric Company decades ago. The original purpose of the Hawthorne studies was to determine how different aspects of the work environment, such as lighting, the timing of breaks, and the length of the workday had on employee productivity. One theory they tested was the lighting. Their theory was that if workers could see better with more light, they would be more productive. As the light level was increased, production went up. However, as the light level was reduced, production went up again. They lowered the level of light and again production increased in a plant that was almost dark. The results were surprising and researchers concluded at the time that employees were responding to the increased attention from their supervisors. The employees performed better when someone cared about what they were doing. This is now called the Hawthorne effect. Putting the Hawthorne effect into practice starts with caring about what people are doing. What would it cost to show appreciation? A little investment of your time. But what keeps us from giving recognition? Are you too busy? Does it feel awkward? Do you assume that people know when things are going well and they don't need to hear it? Even small accomplishments are great opportunities to encourage the behaviors you want to reinforce. Look for actions that add value and support business goals. Recognition opportunities don't have to be large organizational achievements. When people understand how their behavior makes a difference and contributes to the organization, they feel a greater sense of pride and ownership. Of course, each person is different and motivated by different things, but it doesn't take executive approval or even a formal recognition program to make employees feel appreciated and confident that they matter to the organization and to the people that they work with. While the importance of feeling appreciated varies by individual, the need to feel appreciated and valued is a universal truth. Who is the next individual that you'll recognize and appreciate? Forbes School of Business and Technology degree programs and emphases can help you build your skill sets to engage and motivate your workforce.